morning and welcome back to the lecture series on narrative mode and fiction. So, we are discussing science fiction in the light of uh, Donna Haraway's uh, essay, Cyborg Manifesto. Uh, in continuation from our previous lecture, uh, we see that cyborg is a hybrid of militarism and patriarchal capitalism and yet it is not exceedingly faithful to either. Cyborg is located at a point where human and animal boundary line is transgressed uh, and rather than walling off humanity from animaldom, cyborg uh, renders a special status to bestiality, right. Uh, so, it is no longer a homocentric world, uh, the human body bears animal traits and vice versa. The borderline between organism and machine is blurred. In the age of dependence on microelectronics, there are uh, only copies without originals. So, we could see the, the symptom of simulacrum in the cyborg. Cyborg is uh, very much symptomatic of the postmodern era in which simulation does not correspond either with the real or the truth. So, rather we are looking at simulation as inaugurated by a liquidation of all referentials. So, simulation entails artificial resurrection of referentials in the system of or rather in the systems of science. It refers to the hyperreal without an original reference. If we go back to the origin uh, of the postmodern era, what uh, led to the uh, postmodern, uh, you know, postmodernism as a movement, postmodernism in art and culture, we see that the post-industrial age and cultures uh, since the end of the 1950s marks changing conditions of knowledge and an entry into the postmodern conditions. It is almost simultaneous with or coeval with the reconstruction of uh, Europe, the European society. Having largely eliminated the agricultural workforce, post-industrial age is defined by manufacturing employment through creating new uh, automated technology. So, what happens with the introduction of automatons in the post-industrial society? The automatons increase uh, manufacturing productivity, but at the same time, uh, the automatons or the machines displace human workforce. Uh, so, Donna Haraway extrapolates this condition uh, of a machine replacing uh, human workforce, human productivity to humans themselves becoming mechanized and then partly machines, the body parts having some uh, electronic devices, some technical devices uh, in them. In the cybernetic cosmos, labor becomes robotics, sex, sexuality becomes genetic engineering and mind becomes artificial intelligence. So, communication science and biology has blurred this gap between machine and organism. Mind, body and tool are all on intimate terms and they are uh, interwoven. The boundaries between uh, base and superstructure, public and private, material and ideal are also subsequently blurred. So, in the late in the late 20th century, machines are disturbingly lively, whereas uh, human beings are uh, very surprisingly inert. So, so the machine, the, the margin between what is artificial, what is synthetic and what is natural or organic is uh, getting increasingly unclear. The cyborg myth uh, basically tends to undermine and crack open the innocence, the pristinity of nature and uh, primitive culture in a very significant fashion. The authoritative western epistemology's uh, centrality is thereby transcended with the concept of the cyborg. So, we see however, that who the cyborg will be is a matter of survival. 
In other words, whosoever survives in and as the post-Western world. And this post-Western world is a world with reshuffled rules of gender, race, ethnicity, etc. Cyborg is therefore a creature in the post-gender world which has no origin story in the Western sense. Now, movements for animal rights uh, points to this connection that uh, cyborg is bringing in between the nature and the culture. And this kind of interspersing nature with culture uh, opposes the Christian or biblical creationism in which man is shown to be at the center of the world and the nature is at his disposal. This is homocentrism. This is also androcentrism. Uh, instead, movements for animal rights point towards biocentrism. So, while deep ecologists uh, oppose uh, anthropocentrism in general, we see that ecofeminists oppose male centeredness or androcentrism. A cyborg world is not afraid of a joint kinship with animals and uh, machines. So, human body uh, kind of tied up with or linked to animals or machines. Uh, and it is also not afraid of permanently fractional identities and contradictory standpoints. The cyborg world uh, directly flows out of and into the postmodern artistic conditions uh, defined through features uh, such as anti story or non narrative, where meaning is not immediate and a priori, right? And, and uh, such uh, postmodern aesthetics is burdened, therefore, with artifice and complex uh, symbolic meanings. The meaning lies in mimicry or constant uh, deferment or doubling. Uh, we also see that in a postmodern uh, art, linearity is replaced by uh, the time being arrested in an eternal present an eternal present situation uh, from which there is neither a, a movement, a productive or fruitful movement towards the future nor a recoursing uh, in, in a very significant way to the past. There is uh, a focus on dystopian narrative as well without suggesting any uh, way out of it. So, in the 20th century US scientific culture, the boundary line between human and animal world is uh, completely uh, overtaken, completely breached. So, people no longer uh, feel the need for any separation between the two. And feminist culture seeks uh, pleasure in connection of human and other living creatures. And its origin, the origin of blurring these boundaries that specify categories could be seen in the radical libertarian school which stresses on um, androgynous persons and uh, thereby assumes uh, both good and bad qualities of um, men and women in all the persons, right? Uh, in fact, uh, for example, we have Jorian Freeman stressing on becoming androgynous person and celebrates a term such as a derogatory term such as bitch, which uh, contains ample traits of masculinity such as arrogance and brashness, actually prevents the female uh, from being traditionally a sweet person or a caring, uh, sympathetic person. So, the essential unity of gender, uh, race, class has given away and hence uh, there is nothing about being female which naturally uh, binds uh, women across uh, all the different uh, intersections. So, uh, we have multiple uh, sites or, or multiple cases or, or points of jeopardy. Uh, we do not have one woman's problem anymore. We do not have a unified uh, uh, feminist uh, issue or uh, kind of development. So, there are multiple points of development, multiple simultaneous development. The development of feminism is not uh, in a 
unilinear uh, direction. So each category of uh, gender, race and class are formed through contradictory social uh, realities of patriarchy, colonialism and uh, capitalism. Fragmentation within feminism has caused uh, womanhood itself to become uh, an elusive category within which one woman can dominate the other. As an example, we see that uh, the, the socialist and the Marxist uh, feminists. Uh, so, for example, we see that the socialist uh, feminists point out how the bourgeois woman uh, is not unified with the proletarian woman or the proletarian sister, uh, but rather with the bourgeois man uh, for the protection of private property, uh, profiteering, militarism and uh, for propagating racism. So, primary oppressor for the proletarian woman is not patriarchy but capitalism. Now, the cyborg does not limit itself to boundaries of identity or identities. Uh, in other words, there is no obsession with pure experience, there is no pure experience anymore uh, as a uh, simulacrum, it can only have a doubled meaning, uh, a, a displaced uh, experience, uh, an experience which cannot uh, trace back to an original referent. So, pure woman, pure human, these are all elusive categories, existence is assumed as irreversibly hybrid. And consequently, the cyborg defies a social formation through categories of binary differentiations uh, such as man, woman, human, animal and so forth. The sophistication and intelligence of the machines and their capabilities lead to breaking down of the idea of bodies uh, which end at the skin. Uh, or pairing away of the definition of human, right? Uh, the human as a definition is revisited, it is paired off uh, and it is no longer uh, restricted uh, only to the skin of the human. Uh, Sheila Sandoval's formation of new political voice uh, called women of color uh, signifies breakdown of the western male centric world. And uh, instead, it constructs a postmodernist identity out of otherness, difference, and uh, out of uh, you know the desire to focus on specificity. Rather than relativism or pluralism, uh, Sheila Sandoval's oppositional consciousness is about contradictory locations. So, the woman of color has no essential criteria for defining who she is. Uh, her position will be defined through negative identities by the non-black privileged people. Uh, the author here is looking for a brand of socialist feminism which supports incomplete, contradictory, open-ended constructions uh, uh, which, which uh, center, you know, personal and collective selves, not one self but multiple selves. Right, because put it very simply, whenever we have a, a subject formation of the non white, it is generally put in opposition uh, to the white and it reifies the binarism. So, the subject formation, uh, you know, is not definitive and not forever. In critics uh, such as Sheila Sandoval, we see, you know, uh, incomplete, contradictory, open ended. Uh, subject construction or uh, identity formation. Cyborg feminists, according to uh, Donna Haraway, should argue that uh, we as women do not want any natural unity in the uh, development of feminism or in the, uh, uh, in, in the discussion of the uh, feminist problem and uh, that no one whole construction is uh, possible, there is uh, no construction is whole as such. So, women's relation to the world and history uh, is restructured through science and technology. Uh, 
as a, in the cyborg world, there is rearrangement of race, sex, and class in high tech social relations. Familiar groupings are broken and new collectivities are formed uh, due to the fast mobility of capital. So, proliferation of information processing machines, uh, which is very much symptomatic of the postmodern era, have an effect on the way learning or knowledge is circulated as well as on uh, all other kinds of uh, circulation. Let us see, human circulation is also facilitated, the transportation system uh, becomes more sophisticated, people move from one part of the world to another uh, more quickly uh, and with the media, the the uh, the the fact that we are bombarded with information, there is circulation of sounds and visual images at very high frequency. These are all, uh, you know, uh, happening at the uh, onset of the postmodern era. Professional and scientific knowledge becomes the most marketable commodity during this era. So, under postmodern conditions, knowledge is produced in order to be sold, uh, it is consumed in order to be uh, valorized or celebrated in a new production. Uh, the goal of, uh, you know, acquiring any knowledge is exchange. Knowledge therefore ceases to be an end in, in, in itself, knowledge ceases to be an end in itself. Uh, it loses its use value and attains instead an exchange value. From here, uh, Haraway is also looking at the prototypical uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, she is looking at the case of the women who work in the Silicon Valley. Uh, the lives of such women comprise uh, heterosexual monogamy, uh, negotiating child, uh, you know, negotiating child care. Uh, negotiating childcare, uh, a distance from family and traditional community and uh, in the end there is loneliness and economic vulnerability uh, as they age. So, uh, Richard Gordon talks of a homework economy in which factory, home and market are integrated on a new scale uh, and here uh, the places for women are crucial. New communications and homework economy uh, is uh, an onslaught or an attack on and uh, a process of decentralization from white men's uh, unionized jobs, the, the traditional unions that are formed, uh, you know, whose, whose uh, chief architects and protagonists are white men. Homework economy is a move away from uh, the unionized uh, jobs of white men. So, in industrial societies, we see men are in fact more vulnerable to job loss than the women. So, cyber manifest or the cybernetic world, the world of cybernetic organism uh, sees, uh, you know, cross race and cross gender alliances as very important necessary for sustenance of life. Uh, Haraway uh, notes how women survive outside of a unitary self within dispersion and within a diaspora, a diasporic condition uh, such as uh, one can see in the case of the prototypical Silicon Valley. So, although it is useful in imagining a departure from traditional categories of uh, difference. The concept of cyborg, one has to remember, is itself fraught with uh, a western patriarchal violence which cannot be ignored uh, in the greater context of technology and technological innovation. If a cyborg is originally a military invention, then the conceptualization of the female body as the cyborg is only a product of the idea of industrial war machine, uh, which has violence intrinsically, which has violence intrinsically associated with it. The concept of cyborg has 
violence and uh, war and militarism intrinsic, uh, uh, intrinsically associated with it. So the nature of such a violence therefore replaces imperialism with the military. Mechanism of war and technology enable formation of family uh, through army and technology and Haraway calls uh, such uh, propagation caused by militaristic discourse as government issued children. Uh, and Haraway hints that in the cybernetic world, new pleasures, new experiences and powers emerge as uh, the uh, rule of the game changes and keep changing. The units of socialist feminist analysis, uh, which are the race, gender and class are uh, constantly undergoing transformations, they are in a state of flux, which leads to emergence of new kinds of unity, new uh, you know uh, kinds of uh, power groups if we may. Uh, so rather than being a feminist with a common language among the women and thus totalized and imperialized outlook, Donna Haraway studies how to survive uh, within contradictions where let us say uh, human body itself, the basic assumptions of all categories are reshuffle. The human body merges with animals and further merges with machines. Uh, and this is also a way of, uh, you know, uh, disarming or, or, or disempowering the Western male centric viewpoint. The traditional categories, existence of traditional categories such as class, uh, sex or gender, uh, race, reify the western male centric viewpoint and this is what gets foiled or frustrated when the categories are reshuffled, when the entire power game, the rule of the game is uh, changed. When seen from women's point of view, the cyborg world is free from virulent forms of uh, oppression, at least the virulent forms of oppression that women have traditionally and historically faced. It is symptomatic of the alternate path that is shown by science and technology where science could also play a feminized role. There is a point where Donna Haraway says that I would rather be a cyborg than a goddess, uh, which marks the departure of the idea of the woman as a natural uh, biologically driven uh, essentialized goddess of the earth and embraces the uh, potential of science and technology in providing a shifted idea of the woman. Uh, this is uh, a rejection of the nature driven idea of the woman or the goddess. Uh, and, and uh, replacing it with the cyborg. However, the question remains, is the cyborg uh, replacing one system of control with another? Because a cyborg is an image of both imagination and material reality. It uh, reflects the tradition of racist male dominant capitalism uh, too. Uh, it, uh, ref just like it reflects the tradition of uh, progress, the tradition of uh, appropriation of nature uh, as reproduction of culture. So drawing on the pre-1990s uh, technophobia and post-1990s technophilia, sociologist Judy Weichmann uh, emphasizes the social studies of technology and Weichmann insists avoidance of both technological determinism and gender essentialism in order to understand a fluid and flexible gender technology relationship. Uh, uh, in her words, I quote Weichmann, the possibility and the fluidity of gender discourse in the virtual world is constrained by the material world, unquote. So when technology is predominantly controlled and created by men, the question of material constraints set the limits to how much agency technology is capable of granting in redefining race, gender and sexuality uh, because technology in, a, in, in very, put very plainly is the domain of the, has always been the domain of the 
male and uh, it has been uh, you know the medium of expressing very uh, masculinist uh, male centric ideas it has uh, facilitated uh, wars militarism all of which are offshoots of patriarchy so the cyborg could be seen as existing in the liminal space not oppositionally but frictionally against other uh, subjects and identities like i was saying critics have seen this idea of cyborg as a self serving offshoot of liberal feminism which talks about gadgets and movements in techno scientific ecosystem through looking at the animals and the uh, automaton as an extension of each other critics like julia de cook note that haraway's notion of personhood is deeply seated in the western concepts so universality of the cyborg is uh, problematic as the cyborg allows for the uh, centrality of white identity and a techno utopic uh, world view uh, where technology is uh, seen as emancipatory and uh, technology is not examined for its limitations so uh, what dikurk is trying to get at is that uh, technology could have its own limitations the concept of cyborg uh, could have its uh, flip side too in her work race uh, after technology uh, abolitionist tools for the new jim crow rua benjamin shows how technological designs can be discriminatory and in fact uh, they can perpetuate inequality or inequity through amplifying racial hierarchies donna haraway is not pointing to the many uh, lapses of uh, technology in the process of fixing older problems so technology is being deployed to fix old problems of race and gender but uh, technology has its own baggage of problems which is something haraway does not address in her essay so technology and the desire to create and control machines is a realm that is uh, Uh, you know very uh, prominently dominated by the man and thus technology itself may inherently be patriarchal like white man uh, observes so questions that come to our mind uh, are as follows is women's participation in cyberspace and the technological sphere uh, disruptive of the very basis on which technology is built does it debunk the problematics uh, associated with technology or is it merely as uh, you know or lord uh, very correctly puts very significantly puts uh, a futile attempt at dismantling the master's house with the master's tools so uh, we are trying to challenge patriarchy with a tool of patriarchy that uh, technology itself is so the cyborg is supposed to shift the essentialized notions of gender and sex away from the body but does the technological revolution of the late 20th and early 21st century further refy rather than move away from or challenge these definitions what possibilities can the woman the people of color the disabled the queer persons find in science technology and the cybernetic identity the cyborg identity how much access to technology do people from these categories have upon which the concept of cyborg is built unequal technological access uh, could in fact exacerbate worsen uh, the social inequality so does the cyborg enable dismantling of traditional confines of identity and categorization of existence across all levels this is something we need to uh, understand and ask according to ecofeminist uh, vandana shiva a spiritual uh, uh, you know ecofeminist that she is uh, cyborg promotes a reductionist constructivism in its garb of integrating women's problems so vandana shiva uh, looks at how global power structures and the destructive logic of techno science tends to engulf the secret feminine principle called as prakriti or nature uh, 
uh, as imagined in the ancient Indian cosmology. Further, Nina Likhi uh, argues that the cyborg and the goddess, we could call it the goddess or the Devi, which is the one as a proponent of, you know, uh, science or technology, whereas the other uh, as the proponent of nature. So the cyborg being the proponent uh, of science and technology, whereas the goddess or Devi being the proponent of nature or Prakriti are not as dissimilar as they may appear. This is what uh, Likki has to say. Um, in fact, they have much in common. Feminists that are working within the techno-scientific paradigm cannot uh, really privilege cyborg uh, over the goddess uh, or vice versa. We would like to stop our discussion here today and let's meet for another round of discussions in another lecture. Thank you.